There is no point at which you tell these leftists you will give them what they want and they say, okay, we are satisfied. They will keep demanding more. They will keep writing insane articles demanding more and they will keep getting violent. Voting for Joe Biden just ensures they know their tactics work. Recently, we saw 50 Cent, the rapper, say he was voting for Trump because of taxes. But that's not the biggest issue for most people. Well, uh, maybe we'll get into the 50 Cent thing. I think it's inter- it is interesting. I think most people who are walking away are doing so for reasons like this. What you see on the screen is a tweet from James Lindsay, the foremost expert on criticizing critical race theory and on probably on uh, an actual understanding of critical race theory, the far left ideology. What he is showing, there is a mainstream leftist article calling for abolishing the Constitution. Yep. You think, did you think it would just stop with police? No, they started winning that fight. I think something like 150 or so departments across the country have faced some kind of defunding. Major cities across the country have been defunded. And now they're already ramping up the next, I don't know, the next campaign. Or at least they're planting the seeds. Abolish the Constitution. Well, I guess technically the amendment process of the Constitution would allow for its own abolition. Maybe, I don't know, maybe not. But here's what James Lindsay said. Frankly, Going to unhappily vote Republican, including Trump, until the left walks this stuff all the way back. And here's what it says. The American left should work toward abolishing the Constitution someday, either for a new document or a new democratic order written without uh, without a written Constitution. He says, source, not some fringe site. No, it's not the official opinion of establishment Dems, but they're powerless. It's the growing opinion of the movement that controls them, which just spent the year justifying complete lawlessness when for their uh, for their causes. Yeah. Balls in your court, Democrats, says James Lindsay. Someone responded, including Trump. I'd be really interested in the rationale behind this. James Lindsay says, who else is there? I've typed my rationale already once today publicly. I'm not inclined to do it again, but it's not flippantly decided. Well, I'll tell you what. A couple things got me over the hurdle as a liberal who will be voting for Donald Trump, and it is the peace agreements in the Middle East, because I say it 50 billion times. So by now, you're probably like, Tim, we get it, foreign policy. That's why I think the third debate is so important. Of course, maybe you've heard they're going to start muting, you know, Biden or Trump if they try and speak up. So that means it just means it's going to be a puppet show. It's going to be trash. But I'll tell you what the most concerning thing to me is in terms of domestic policy, critical race theory. I recently had a friend tell me that they used to be pro-choice in the sense that I am, you know, safe, legal, rare, right? Now it's not for any reason at any time. And I'm just like, where did you go? Where did this come from? Why is the left going insane? But I'm gonna stop. I know uh, pro-choice has nothing to do with the Constitution, but let me tie this together. How is it that in only a few years, people I know who used to have the same positions as me have jumped off the cliff. They've gone so far left, they've circumvent, uh, circumnavigated the globe. How did they? Well, actually, not quite, but maybe at some. No, actually, yeah, I think they're coming up on the fringe far right now with their segregation. Yes, segregation is happening. I've got articles for you. The new segregation. In the name of social justice, the Seattle government agencies are conducting employee training sessions separated by race. It is happening. How? So I'll tell you this. What's right now just someone saying, oh, you know, I used to be pro-choice, safe, legal and rare. Now I'm just, you know, do whatever you want. Eventually becomes abolish the Constitution. I actually have the article pulled up. Maybe maybe, maybe they, they really do want to abolish the Constitution. It's 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 uh, no joke. But I want to show you some other things because I'm here to talk to you about the left going off the rails and why they must be stopped and why liberals and people like me and probably and, and James Lindsay will be voting for Republicans. Now, I tell you this. James Lindsay says unhappily vote Republican. Eh, I'm a little bit more uh, milk toast than that. I'm not going to necessarily be unhappy about my vote. I'm going to feel good about it. I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to I'm going to hit. Well, actually, it's New Jersey, so they're doing all mail voting. I'm going to fill out the card and then drop it off somewhere, I suppose. Hopefully it gets counted, right? Uh, I'm going to do it uh, quite happily, quite happily. Now, am I happy that I have to vote for Trump? Not, not, not really. 
I mean, of course, I'd rather have someone who's great, but Trump's done some good things. I can get get behind that. So uh, I'm not unhappy. You know, there, there were some progressives I supported because they were anti-war and I was worried Trump wouldn't do the right thing. But Trump's been improving on that. So now I'm like, OK, you know, I, I got me over that over that hurdle. But in terms of the woke left, the cult of intersectionality, the critical race theorists, Trump's banning that and it's working. Things like this are shocking the American people. Here, I want to show you something. Someone responded to James Lindsay saying, people who say this were always going to vote for Trump and just want to pretend it offends their morals. It doesn't. They should be shunned alongside every other Trump voter. Really? Well, I have a response to this. But first, let me let me show you James Lindsay's response. And by the way, if you want to follow James Lindsay, it's at Conceptual James. They only have two tricks. And it's time you start seeing them and rejecting. You're either stupid or immoral if you disagree with them. And you've always been deficient in that way. They are totalitarians. Do not give them power individually, socially, or politically. That's what they say. People who say this have always, you know, we're always going to vote for Trump. Let me show you exactly what James Lindsay said. I'm unhappily going to vote Republican, including Trump, until the left walks this way back. Here's my response. I didn't vote in 2016. I didn't vote for Hillary, and I didn't vote for Trump. The last time I voted for president, it was Barack Obama. You've now got me, Johnny Rotten and James Lindsay, deciding to vote for Donald Trump because you are too stupid and blind to realize what you're doing. And maybe that was the plan the whole time. But let me show you this phenomenon is real. This was part of my main segment yesterday. But for context, I want to make sure you all see it. And then we'll talk about the Supreme Court and 50 Cent and a bunch of other things. What's going on with them trying to fundamentally destroy our country? I give you now Gallup's party affiliation polling, and I'm going to take you back to 2016, September 14th through 18th. 27% of people said they were Republican, 40 were independent, and 32% were Democrats. I bring you back to the same time period in 2020. 28% are Republicans, a gain of 1%. 42% are independent, a gain of 2%. So then you may be asking yourself, where did those gains come from? Democrats are now at 20 seven percent. They've gone down. Walk away is real. People are leaving the Democratic Party. Now, most of them are becoming independent. That I understand. In I think it was in Pennsylvania, there was a Republican state. No, I'm sorry, it was a Democratic state politician who said that they were quitting the party. He was quitting the party and would would now be an independent caucusing with Republicans. Standing ovation to that guy. We have seen sheriffs in many different counties in the Midwest reject the Democratic Party. And just the other day, I led my main segment with this, a lifelong Democrat, well-known cam- uh, 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 Democratic campaign, campaigning individual activist, what do you want to call it? A woman. She said that she was quitting the party. And you know why? Because the Democratic Party of Nebraska passed a resolution condemning the county attorney, the prosecutor, as supporting or, or perpetuating white supremacy, which is fundamentally false, absolutely not true. That's insane. But that's critical race theory. That's what James Lindsay has been pointing out and is freaking him out. And it freaks me out, too, which is why you see so many left libertarian individuals anti SJW now believing they're conservatives or outright joining the Republican Party. I remember uh, it wasn't during Gamergate, which you may may remember as a great culture war battle, but it was at some point in the anti SJW space where A bunch of people started doing political compass tests and finding out they actually were center left or left libertarian. And they were confused by this saying like, wait a minute, how am I left libertarian if I disagree with the left and the feminists and the mainstream? Because, well, the ideology of critical race theory is not inherently economically left or right. So a lot of people started discovering that they actually weren't conservatives. But guess what? They certainly are now. What ends up happening is you get the far left just increasingly trying to destroy the fabric of this country, which many people actually like, by the way. They, they like America. Hey, how about that? It gets worse and worse and worse. Then you have the conservatives saying reasonable things. Maybe we should keep the Constitution and maybe there should be nine Supreme Court justices. Maybe we shouldn't fundamentally change the structure of our government overnight to appease people who want power. People start saying, hey, that makes sense. You end up with people saying, look, I get it. You know, the, the conservatives are, pro, are pro-life, are 
But I, I've, had, I've had these conversations where they say, we understand there may be some circumstances. We'll negotiate. And I say, look at that. Conservatives willing to negotiate on this very, very difficult moral and ethical conundrum that we face in this country. The left is just straight up pro-abortion now, like to the point of birth. It's not an exaggeration. They literally campaigned for this in Virginia. And I'm like, how did we get to that point? Because I'll tell you, that is a crazy leap. Tulsi Gabbard, of course, she came out and said, she, and she said, safe, legal, and rare. There's got to be some restrictions. And I'm like, thank you. Yes, there, have, there has to be. And there can be some exceptions for, uh, you know, between the doctor and, and, and the mother, because I recognize it's not black and white and there are medical issues. But what we're seeing right now, I believe conservatives are going to be conservative. Now you got 50 cent. This one's funny. I don't care. Trump doesn't like black people. 50 Cent endorses president after rejecting Joe Biden's 60% plus tax plans for anyone earning over 400K in some states. I got to be honest. Uh, I understand why 50 50 Cent is shocked by this. Joe Biden wants to create a tax plan that would create an effective tax rate in California of 62.6% and in New York of 62%. I'm not super worried about people making more than $400,000 a year. I got to be honest. Yeah, well, you know, that's not the worst thing I've heard. And I really don't think you 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 earn any favors by from people by saying that, you know, oh, no, the rich people. Oh, no, 50 cent. But I tell you what, you're going to get a lot of wealthy and powerful people saying, Joe Biden, what are you doing? Because the left is going too far. Even Joe Biden, who is supposed to be a corporate crony Democrat, wants an effective tax rate of 62 percent for people. I'm not showing you this to complain about the tax rate. I got to be honest. I do well for myself. I'm not really worried about 50 cent paying more in taxes. I got, I, I'll tell you this. I'm not going to want to live in these places, but people make more than 400K. Most people aren't going to see that, aren't going to care. I don't think it's going to affect them all that much. And I think things like this actually might put them off. But what this does show, in my opinion, is that where, where the Democrats used to be in terms of taxes was, you know, moderate taxes. You know, we're not, you know, the Democrats weren't all like 90% or, you know, flat tax. That was Republicans. But Joe Biden is being pulled quite a bit. Why? Bernie Sanders. This is it. It's like a, it's like a gradient. I'm showing you this again, not because I care. Look, I, I actually I'm for a progressive tax that sees more people make, you know, paying more taxes. Well, I will say one of the problems with, with Joe Biden's tax plan is that it's blanket for everybody above 400. So it's like flat tax for those above 400 at a really high rate and low tax and progressives for everyone under. That doesn't make sense. What we need is a very, very large uh, progressive tax system. But what this shows, in my opinion, is Joe Biden being pulled to the left, not super far left, but 62 percent. You got to admit, that's pretty far left. The rest of the left will keep pulling. They won't stop. They want to outright abolish the Constitution. They want to cancel Chris Pratt because uh, because because he won't do a fundraiser for Joe Biden. How dumb is this? And, uh, you know, uh, there's a bunch of other stuff. The segregation stuff really gets me. But um, let me show you this. Senate Republicans offer constitutional amendment to block Supreme Court packing. That's really what they're trying to do. Look, they want to abolish the Constitution, and it's not an exaggeration. Here's the new republic. The Constitution is in crisis. There's no reason why a rigged Supreme Court should have the final say on the law of our land. And this is from October 19th, 2020. They just put this out, basically saying we need to get rid of the Constitution. We've seen multiple periods of one party dominance in our history. We've also seen defeated political parties wither and die. Why shouldn't the Republican Party join them? You see, the American left should work toward abolishing the Constitution someday, either for a new document or a new democratic order without a written Constitution. No, we want a written Constitution. We like our Constitution. It constrains the government. These people are authoritarians. They want to own you. They want to own every aspect of your life. They want to manipulate the courts when they don't win. They want racial segregation. They are doing this now. This stuff freaks me out, which is why I'm going to be voting Republican. Now, I will not just vote blindly Republican. I'm going to look at who the choices are. I'm going to Google search them and, and make sure because you just blindly voting Republican doesn't mean you're going to actually solve any of these problems, right? It just means you're going to end up voting for someone you don't know, and they could be as problematic as the last party. This has been one of the biggest problems we face as a country for a very, very, very long time. People just vote party. Yeah, well, you know, the Republicans are better. Yeah, well, you know, the Democrats are better. And so when I look at these electoral maps, 
And they're, they're talking about predictions for, you know, November 3rd or 10th or whenever we find out the results. You know, it really bums me out. Illinois is surrounded by red states or at least red leaning states and, and, and swing states. But Illinois never changes because people in Chicago, a big city, don't know, don't care. Just say vote Democrat. I know I grew up there. I remember I went to vote once. I think I was like I was like 19 or 20. I can't remember my exact age. And my my uh, my dad and uh, and his, his, some of some of his family were like, we're all going to go out and vote. You're going to come with us and vote. I'm like, who do I vote for? Just vote Democrat all the way. That's what I did. I think I was like 18. I can't remember exact, the exact year I went in. And I was just like, just OK. We all were going out to vote. So we all just voted Democrat. I had no idea who I was voting for, or what I was voting for. And I think that's abhorrent. And I regret it. I can't remember exactly what this was. It was local elections, I'm pretty sure. I remember when I went and voted for Barack Obama, and I wasn't completely sure, but I was excited about like, hey, everyone told me that was the way to end the war, right? And it wasn't. It just made everything worse. I love it now when I see these lefties say, well, at least Obama didn't start any new wars. And I'm like, wait, what? Syria, Liberty, <laughs> Syria, Libya, Liberty. That's out of place. Libya, Syria, um, escalations in Yemen. Uh, we've got a lot of conflict going on thanks to Barack Obama. Escalation in the Middle East, Middle East in general. The, the wave of conflict across North Africa and the Middle East, the Arab Spring, all the stuff, and the U.S. involvement, I'm not happy about. It was a mistake. Donald Trump's first few, first few years weren't perfect, but I'll tell you this. I didn't vote in the past several elections. I'm going to vote now. James Lindsay is too. And I tell you, man, a lot of other people are as well. Right now, we're starting to see a lot of early voting data. It's not a guarantee as to who's going to win, but I'm going to do a bigger, a bigger thing on this for the next segment. But it really is starting to show that Democrats are, are dramatically underperforming and they're starting to get worried about it. Regular people may be waking up. You see this sign? Wait, let, 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 me, let, me, let me read this. They say, at the, King, uh, at the King County Library System, a private consulting firm called Racial Equity Consultants recently held racially segregated listening sessions. The consultants begin with an anti-oppression framework. Internal documents show, and they use segregated sessions to root out institutional privileges and systemic inequities. Widespread institutional racism is said to exist in the libraries, and employees who reject that premise are accused of internalized racism. When reached by email, racial equity consultants said that it was not authorized to comment. This is what they're doing. They say at the King County Prosecutor's Office, Chief Prosecutor Dan Satterberg and senior staff have recently required employees to sign an equity and social justice pledge and assigned continued training for white employees who must do the work to learn the true history of racism in our country. As part of the new initiative, white people are encouraged to participate in racially segregated anti-racist action groups and agency-wide cultural competency trainings that teaches them how to adopt a new non-oppressive and non-exploitative attitude. According to a leaked memo, Satterberg recently wrote a letter to staff suggesting that the privileged white male cohort in his office should shut up and listen. The prosecutor's office confirmed the authenticity of the equity pledge and staff wide memo, but Satterberg did not offer comment. October 19th, 2020 from Christopher Rufo. This is illegal. It's a violation of the Civil Rights Act. I believe it's title. What is that one? Title seven of the Civil Rights Act. You can't do this. They're doing it anyway. They're changing language. They want to abolish the Constitution. They want to pack the courts. And now I will, I will end with the final point. Joe Biden is doing their bidding. Is he perfect? No. Is Joe Biden far left himself? Of course not. Is Joe Biden a socialist? No, he's not. Is Joe Biden on bent knee with tears streaking down his face before the woke left? Yes. Now, of course, the woke left is going to say, Biden's not doing anything for us. Joe Biden has been desperately begging the far left to please vote for me. I'll do anything you say. And that's why court packing won't be answered. Joe Biden doesn't want to answer the question because the far left wants him to do it. The far left wants him to tear this country down bit by bit, getting rid of the Constitution and turning the, the Supreme Court into a legislative body. That's what it will become. It's not supposed to be. But it will be. The Republicans have some blame in this. I mean, there's a back and forth, but it's typically the left, the Democrats. They're desperate. They're, they're desperate plea for power. They're willing to say or do anything. The challenge right now for Biden is that moderate Democrats are jumping ship. Walk away is real. They are leaving. 
We've seen this happening. We've seen the parades in L.A. We have seen Brandon Strzok of the Walk Away campaign leading these people away from the left. And that's the big problem for Joe Biden. If he goes too far left pandering to the, to, to the, the, the insane critical race theorists, he'll lose more moderates. He's already bleeding moderates as it is. And the, and the progressives aren't completely uh, convinced. So he's desperately trying to get both sides. He's losing the moderates. And I'll tell you why. Because he is embracing the, the left too much. What will you get with a Joe Biden presidency? Erosion. And I'll tell you this, I got to be honest, even Trump is an erosion of the, the American way of life. Now, Trump is doing a lot to repair that, but there's a lot of things Trump does that aren't perfect. So Trump is essentially a, a slight net positive, in my opinion, towards maintaining the American way of life. And that is not some call to, uh, uh, you know, the past days of white supremacy or anything like that. Of course not. They'll, they'll try and claim it. I know firsthand. I'm sorry. I know secondhand from my from my from my mom and being told what life was like before civil rights, before loving v. Virginia. And I know how bad it was when Trump says make America great again. The left tells you he's talking about the era of segregation. No, Trump is talking about the 80s, the economic booms that we saw through the 90s. He's talking about when manufacturing still existed in this country. He's talking about the Rust Belt. He's talking about Michigan, Michigan and the auto plants. And when he goes to Michigan and says, we're going to make America great again, what he's telling them is, I'm going to bring back these factories. You will have jobs. You will make products for the American people again, and you will be successful. And the people are hearing him. Now, it worries me because the mainstream media has been lying and they've been manipulating. And if that works and their lies work and Trump loses, Joe Biden will bring us segregation. He will bring us people who want to uh, abolish the Constitution. He will bring us a nightmarish reality based on his fears, his spinelessness, and his ineptitude. And to be quite honest, his inability. Donald Trump will bring us bombastic, arrogant smack talk, which I'm not a big fan of. I find funny sometimes, but I don't think a president should be engaging in the behavior he does. He'll be loud, boisterous, bombastic, offensive, crude, crass, arrogant, loud mouthed, and all of these really bad things. <laughs> But the country will exist. We'll have a constitution. We'll have a court. We'll have, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think honesty is the right word. I think to a certain degree, yeah. I, I love it when Trump was like, we got these soldiers in Syria guarding the oil. It's great. I'm like, oh, geez. he's just coming out and saying it. And he, loves, he does lie about dumb things. Honesty isn't the right word, but sort of an authenticity, I suppose. You can be authentic and still be kind of lying. As long as I, I kind of get a feel for who you are and I view you as a regular person. I think if Donald Trump wins, I'm going to roll my eyes quite a bit, but the country is going to be okay. Our constitution will stand, we'll strengthen our, 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 our country, our border, our economy, and we'll, we'll push back on this insane far left. I think regular liberals are seeing this. And so when I saw that tweet from James Lindsay, I said, you know what? I completely agree. I do. And I wonder how many others agree. I think a lot. I don't think we're seeing the inverse. There's no rational, regular American saying like, I like this for some reason. I want to be a victim and be oppressed. You're seeing weird, terrified people just bending the knee like Joe Biden with tears coming down his face. I'll leave it there. The next segment I have for you at 4 p.m., we're going to go over some of these polls because let me just tell you, it's looking really good for Donald Trump and the Republicans. Not perfect, not guaranteed, but some people are starting to say landslide. And I think that's wishful thinking, but there is data to back this up. I will see you all in the next segment over at youtube.com slash Timcast at 4 p.m. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you over there.